Theater audiences love special effects, and producers try to indulge them. Even during the 19th century, theater technicians were quite adept at enhancing the action on stage. One of their tools was called a thunder run, or thunder roll. It was a long wooden trough through which stagehands rolled cannonballs to mimic the sound of a thunderstorm. Historians believe that only one thunder run is left in this country. It's in Wilmington, North Carolina, and Eileen LeBlanc of member station WHQR took a tour. Wilmington's Thalian Hall was built in the mid-1800s. Like many theaters of the time, it was the pride of the city. And like many theaters, Thalian Hall had its own special effects devices. The hall's manager, Tony Rivenbark, explains that typically 19th century theaters were equipped with trap doors and elevators, turntables and treadmills, rain machines and thunder runs. It's just a different kind of medium today. We can use a tape recorder, but in that day they were able to create the sound of a thunderstorm with wood and metal and rope and possibly even canvas. And in those days when audiences did not have the access to media that we do today, that was pretty special to go inside a building and hear a thunderstorm at will. Most theaters built in the 19th century have disappeared, victims of fire or urban renewal. If the theater did survive, chances are the effects devices did not. The area they took up was often converted to storage space. Joan Dillon, a board member of the League of Historic American Theaters, is completing a book on 19th century theaters and has found that Thalian Hall's Thunder Run is probably the only one left. The only other one that I've ever known about was at Nelsonville, Ohio, and it burned about five or six years ago. 19th century theaters were called opera houses, though very few operas were ever staged. Dylan says the opera houses were as common then as movie houses are today. At one time, to give you a, a statistic, in opera houses, and a lot of these are very small, but Iowa, at the turn of the century, had 1,300 opera houses in the state of Iowa. Kansas City, I know, had 13 legitimate theaters at the turn of the century, and now has one left and probably equipment like this would have been in maybe several of them, and then you could multiply that around the country. Thalian Hall's Thunder Run is hidden high above the ceiling of the theater, right over the orchestra pit, about 70 feet above the stage floor. Getting there is not easy. A series of stairs leads to a tiny room filled with boxes of dusty archived programs and such. A narrow, old, wooden slat door opens to a dark stairway, which you climb to the even darker attic. You straddle a beam and crouch through a small tunnel. Watch your head in your back. A light is clamped near a brick wall ahead. Tony Rivenbark leads the way. We are on a gangway, in a sense, that is over the thunder roll, which runs the entire width of the building. Twice. The wooden trough of the Thunder Run starts high on one side of the theater and slopes all the way to the other side of the building. There's a slight drop, then a second trough runs diagonally back across the building. And then there is a wooden contraption which would allow you to load a cannonball, and then you would pull a rope, it would be attached to a pulley, you pull a rope, and then it would release that cannonball, and then as it came back into place would load another one then the first cannonball would start rolling down the trough, making a rumbling sound as if it was a distant thunderstorm moving towards you. Subsequent cannonballs would increase the sound and the storm would seem to be getting closer until it was in full force overhead. Pieces of the release mechanism are missing, so stagehands drop a few 21-pound cannonballs into the trough for a demonstration. The sound reverberated in the attic and was amplified naturally by the huge cavernous space. It rumbled down through the open area over the stage and out into the audience. But in the 1950s, during one of the theater's renovations, a firewall was built that cut off the sound path. 
After many idle decades, the Thunder Run was shaken out of mothballs in 1983 for the 125th anniversary of the theater and was last heard by audiences at a gala in 1990. For both of those events, sound designer Paul Johnson gave the 150-year-old sound effect device some modern electronic help. If you operate it without any type of amplification, from the seating area, it sounds like maybe there's a couple of people fighting up in the attic or something. So I did some contact pickups on it and amplified it. And then to try and recreate the original sound path, I flew huge speakers aimed down to the stage so that it would simulate the original path. Now, whether it sounded like it originally did or not, I guess no one is left alive to tell me. But it certainly sounded very much like thunder. In the center of the empty house, you can get an idea of what it must have been like to attend a performance of The Tempest a hundred years ago. Paul Johnson has started fundraising efforts to fully restore the Thunder Run. And Thalian Hall Theater manager Tony Rivenbark hopes audiences in the next century will get a chance to hear a real old-fashioned thunderstorm. There's something eminently theatrical about the 19th century that the 20th century continues to try to imitate. But there's still something special about turning the crank on a phonograph or a music box opening up and the tune coming through. Yes, you can record it and listen to a tape, but it is not the same thing. There's a physical vibration by the presence being there. We're certainly not going to get rid of all the technological advances we've made to the building, but at the same time, we're not going to throw out what makes it terribly, terribly unique and special. I think the combination of the two is what is exciting. For National Public Radio, I'm Eileen LeBlanc in Wilmington, North Carolina.